So guys, Tinubu shops for ideas on how to end the hunger in the land. The question remains, will he find one? So he met at the state house with some governors from different states. And you know, so many people have argued that Nigerian governors are always so lazy in terms of coming up with ideas on how to make Nigeria work. We've seen that across the state. I mean, so many states are so doza in terms of coming up with ideas, you know, creative ideas and programs on how to make the states viable. Most of them depend on whatever they get from Abuja, you know, in servicing the state. And that is why unemployment is all over the places. So they've come together to seek for ideas on how to end the hunger in the land subsidy gone they didn't think about the consequences let me allow you watch this video president bola met tinubu on thursday with governors from all 36 states of the federation at the state house in abuja to find ways to tackle insecurity and the economic hardship in the country over 25 governors and deputy governors along with the inspector general of police ministers of agriculture information and fct minister yes and wiki were in attendance while during the meeting river state governor Simfubara was asked by Vice President Kashim Shatima to acknowledge his predecessor, Yesam Wiki, generating reactions on social media. Well, let's take a look. I can see your head down. Well, all right, let me take some tweets. Uh, this person wrote, uh, this person's Emma, he wrote, uh, I can't believe that a whole certain governor in the person of Sim Fubara will be ordered in this manner. <laughs> it is well. Look at the way we can give him a very cold treatment. Well, Seto Fumi wrote, there's something about the presidential villa. You don't dare disobey order. Even the most trivial directive, Vice President Shatima told Fubara to go greet Emperor Wike. He complied immediately. Emperor Wike too couldn't snub him. Meanwhile, yesterday in Yenagoa, Governor Obaseki refused to shake hands with his deputy, Shwaibu. <laughs> So you can say Fubara is a very nice guy because right? he, he actually obeyed, he, he obeyed his obedience and he, he obeys the rules and regulations. He went straight to do what Vice President Kashim Shetima told him what to do. But you, you, you said that uh, uh, well, Governor Obaseki was snubbing tribal was, 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 yeah. At least, when was he, that? even though there was a delayed reaction yeah. from um, Minister Wiki, when he, he had to look up to see who was saying hello to him, but he still responded. Yes. Oh, I think it was almost with a smile. But Governor, Governor Obaseki <laughs> was like, if I was like, hey, we should, they should, there was some trend with that, like, mm -mm. Yeah. No way, not happening. But I think it speaks to the fact that these were people that were chummy in the past. They call themselves my brother, mm -hmm. my friend, my father, and all that. And it just goes to show that all is not well in you know between the no love lost between Governor Baseki and his deputy Philip Shaibu, who is also hoping to get the ticket of the PDP in Edo State to run for governor. But beyond that, you know, you said something, Oji, that it looks like um, Governor Sim Fubara. Now the one in the yes. what happened in Abuja is obedient. Yes. He listens to people. He listens to people. That is a problem. <laughs> it has identified as in fact they say that he's too obedient. He listens this is too much and that sometimes you should get a bit of a backbone yeah. that's been the conversation as to it looks like he's trying to make peace right. with his godfather with the man whom he credited during mm -hmm. his um, inauguration speech that was i have to give honor to him it is due yes. um, and i give it to um wiki but it looks like minister wiki is not having it no he's at not. least it was civil so yeah. we applaud that but beyond that the conversation they were talked about earlier the importance of the governor's meeting with the president and these key stakeholders mm -hmm. to address two um, big issues security and food security that's good to see and i, I hope they'll put away their differences to mm -hmm. work for the people they can fight in the private yeah. They can have disagreements in the private, but Absolutely. I don't do to the I wouldn't people. expect Sim Fubara to do, actually. Was he going to not just disobey uh, the vice president? He could. He could, direct. though, but he could. People are saying, I mean, he's the governor. Wiki should be the one going Roger, to... let me ask you a question. <laughs> if, if Governor Wiki, if yes. Governor Wiki were in this position, do yes. you think anyone could have ordered him to go and uh, say hello to somebody? Uh, well, I'm not in Wiki's mind. He can, <laughs> can, you so. can't put me on the spot. <laughs> but they call him emperor <laughs> for a reason. Go ahead. Well, I think people react to situations differently. Let's start with the meeting at the villa. The VP asking uh, uh, Fubara to go and greet your girl. But because he pointed, he, 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 was, he wasn't making any mistake. He pointed in the direction of yes. the, go, go and greet your girl. Yes. Go and greet your principal. And he, he obeyed. Now, as for the people saying, uh, they've turned uh, Sim Fubara into a boy among men. I don't think so. It's just simple courtesy. I think we should even commend uh, the uh, vice president 
After all, we are told in the Bible. Matthew 5, uh, verse 9. You are looking at me, <laughs> Pastor's wife. Pastor Matthew. No, the, the Bible, you know, answers all things. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, yes. for they shall be called the sons of God. <laughs> so that was uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, vice president yes. trying to make peace. Mm-hmm. You know, say, please, greet your God. Don't make the mistake of walking you know, and ignoring him. So I think it's my It's okay. Whatever, yes, some wicked things or not, it was good optics for his successor to say hello to him. After all, they are from the same place. As for Governor Baseki and Philip Shaibu, the same Philip Shaibu that has been on this program, I think not once, not uh, twice, say that he helped uh, Obaseki. He used his resources to make him governor. <laughs> and that Obaseki is uh, an English. If you have uh, a deputy who has abused you like that on international television, and the relationship uh, between you as scholars, and then the, that same deputy sees you in public, he wants to greet you. So you you uh, you you greet him. Well, it depends on the kind of person you are. Right. Some other people, their temperament will not allow that. I say, look, no, we are not on the same page. You and I, we are not friends. Don't let us pretend in public. There are some people like that. If they are angry with you, they are angry with you. They are not going to laugh with you. And yet there are some other people. They will laugh with you. They will shake your hand. They, they have a dagger in their pocket. If they have a chance, they will they will put that dagger straight into your heart. So two different personalities here. Yeah. So it may be that in Yesum Wiki's case, uh, greeting uh, Fubara may not mean much. Deep within him, he may say, look at this stupid mm-hmm. boy. You know, but uh, Governor Basek is a different kind of person. Don't come here and pretend that we are friends. We are not friends. Let us prove it to ourselves on the field of play when the PDP conducts his primaries. And then we'll know who is the ogre and who is the... Uh, yeah. Is it boy? Is it fair to use the word boy? <laughs> No, who is a godson? But I mean, the meeting was a good meeting at the end of the day. I mean, the issue of state policing is back on the table. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that the federal government has directed, you know, state uh, governors to stop food hoarding. Uh, it's, it's great to, you know, see these types of uh, uh, meetings. And hopefully something comes out of it. And it's not just audio. Yes. No, I mean, because what we've been hearing is all these audio promises. But speaking about uh, economic uh, hardship, yesterday we showed a video of a group of people being flogged while queuing up. For 100 naira bread in Lagos Island. Well, another video has emerged showing a crowd of Lagosians looting a truckload of yam meant for palliatives at the central mosque in Lagos. The incident is said to have occurred last week. This video was alarming. It happened last week. It started trending, I believe, yesterday after that video that we showed with, uh, you know, Lagosians being flogged for 100 naira bread. Like I said, I did reach out to the Lagos state government, and this is what uh, they sent to me, uh, that the religious leader in Lagos Island had bought yams to distribute to the people in some parts of Lagos Island to support people in this economic situation. He didn't plan properly on the distribution method as the yams landed and people got hints that it will be shared for free. They rushed there to start doing it themselves. I mean, this this was what happened. This was the incident. And, you know, we, we see these things happen. I mean, you cannot not say that there's economic hardship. This is Lagos. You saw the video. People were rushing for like two tubas, three tubas. They were just, you know, out there. But I mean, the situation is really getting out of hand, out of control. And we implore the people that are, you know, trying to help out in this economic situation to try to, you know, follow due process, find ways to get the poorest of the poor and distribute these things properly. Well, all right. Well, in Ogun State, members of the National Union of Foods, Beverages, and Tobacco Employees in the local government area of the state took to the streets on Tuesday to protest the ban placed on the manufacture, distribution, and sale of alcoholic beverages in sachet and pet bottles by the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control. The protesters were seen carrying placards with inscriptions like, Alcohol is in the problem of Nigeria. We are hungry. <laughs>
right, Dr. Abati, this happened in your state. I mean, I believe uh, earlier this week I had someone from NAFDAQ talk about this ban. I think this ban is coming in, uh, you know, at a very wrong time. But the issue is the, is the fact that this ban was already in place. There was already, you know, um, information out there that these sachet um, alcoholic drinks should be stopped because it endangers, uh, you know, even young children, Dr. Abati. Okay, let me start with the uh, distribution of food. I think you put your finger on it correctly. That the issue is about planning the distribution. Mm -hmm. We commend the uh, religious leader who has got it fit to provide food for people uh, in this uh, midst of scarcity. But I recall Charles Darwin. Mm. Charles Darwin was the one who propounded the theory of survival of the fittest, yes. the theory of natural uh, selection. And he said in cases where you have issues with food, with health crisis and all that, only the strongest will survive. Mm -hmm. And this would seem to be a literal, you know, uh, application of that theory, where, you know, food is available, you see how they are struggling. You know, only the... Uh, very fit and the strongest <laughs> will have access to those tubers of yam. Uh, of yam. But why the uh, planning of the distribution is important is that, look, some people could be injured. Absolutely. Uh, some people could collapse. In fact, they think could degenerate into a riot. In fact, uh, the next time uh, food is being distributed in this manner, people can kill yeah, each other. Absolutely. That is what happens when you have a chaotic situation, where life is beginning to border on uh, the nasty, the short, and uh, the, the, the British. So, Planning the distribution is important. Whoever wants to donate food should please plan. And maybe they can liaise with state authorities also to assist in helping with distribution. The only problem with that is that they will, the philanthropists will be afraid that the uh, food that is being uh, uh, made available may end up uh, in the houses of uh, the civil servants mm -hmm. who themselves are hungry. But if planning is fine, you know, there's nothing bad in uh, giving to the other people. Secondly, the people protesting. It's not only in Ogun State, though. That people have been protesting. They protested also in Lagos yes. over the ban of uh, uh, pet, uh, you know, items and uh, such a drink. So it's not an open state problem. <laughs> okay, we and, and this is the background. Yeah. Navdak, yes, as far back as 2018, mm -hmm. had consulted, had met with these same distillers and alcoholic uh, beverage uh, retailers and pre uh, manufacturers. Okay, and it was agreed that you know because of alcoholic consumption, mm -hmm. which uh, WHO says is re responsible for about 200. Payments, that this should be freestyle. And they said by 2022, the manufacturers of these Seche alcohol uh, drinks should uh, reduce by 5%. Mm -hmm. But the enforcement of the uh, final stage of it will be in January 2024. And after, under uh, Professor Mujisola Adiyeye, who has now been reappointed uh, by uh, President uh, Tinubu, in recognition of her commitment, hard work, you know, and the leadership that she has provided in that agency now said, okay, they will start implementing. It's the implementation of what was agreed upon that has caused the yes. problem. Even Manufacturers Association of Nigeria is protesting. Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, the DG, Shegun Ajayi Kadire, was on the same uh, program, right? Yes, he, he was on the morning show, yes. saying that, look, about uh, uh, 5.5 uh, million uh, people will be kept out of uh, uh, out of work, and about 55,000 you know, businesses will be affected. And that instead of stopping alcoholic beverages from being produced, that what government can do is to put one in caution. You know, the Surgeon General uh, has said alcoholic drink will be dangerous to your health. The same thing that is done with, uh, with uh, what is it called? Yes. With uh, tobacco. tobacco yeah. You know, and some other people have other measures and say, okay, why don't you enforce age limits? That if you are below 18, you cannot take uh, alcohol. And also for transport, uh, uh, transport owners association to make sure that uh, those uh, drivers at the motor parks that have bloodshot eyes as early as 7 a.m., you know, every day, you know, are, are, are controlled and conscientized, mm -hmm. you know, not to uh, overconsume alcohol and for them to be educated about the implications for their health. Mm -hmm. So the argument is out there. It's not an open state problem. It's a national <laughs> issue. It is a national issue, but this is the video I... <laughs> This is the video that is trending, Dr. Abbas. And it happened in your state. My director corrected and said, it's not otter, it's otter. Is it otter? Yeah. It happened in otter. <laughs> okay. So, but I did see some of those videos that, you know, um, you talked about, and it is a big problem. I mean, I did see some videos in Lagos. I the argument is out there. I have young children. And I understand where they are coming from. Yes. Because these things are in sachet, Access you know, and they are accessible. I mean, enforcement of age limit. I don't know how that would help in any ways whatsoever. Because, you know, at the end of the day, they can always get their gates men or whatever. The fact is they are you know, little sized items that they can put in their school bags or yes. whatever and go to school and they are consuming it. Yeah. It's the truth.
And even the concentration mm. or the uh, percentage of alcohol was raised. That in mm. those small sachets, 200 milliliters. 30%. Whilst in a bottle, you can get about 5%. So it's not just the content. It's the fact that it's concentrated as well. Or the percentage of alcohol is quite high. And they identify the fact that we have an underage drinking problem. Yes. One that perhaps we haven't even under, we don't understand the scope of this or how bad the situation is. And according to WHO, um, underage drinking leads to other things. There are more, there's more propensity to do hard drugs, mm -hmm. to fail in school. So there, there's a ripple effect. There's also an impact on crime levels. Mm -hmm. as well in terms of alcohol induced but let me say something which is also the argument for man and the Absolutely, BDN, is yeah. the fact that the response of ni ni the nigerian regulatory bodies is ban 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 stop 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 we're just talking about the nurses yesterday so when they are, they are unable to use the um, tools available for you to regulate you then outrightly ban mm -hmm. now the effect of banning is that it affects both the intended and then their secondary and effect as well. So those who you the underage drinking, and to be honest, like you mentioned, if we don't get regulation right, it yes. will not stop it. If we're not able to enforce the fact that a young person cannot go into a store to buy alcohol, or the fact that a young person doesn't have access to this, it's just going to be stopping businesses yes. without access. And that is the argument that yeah. the, your solution is not going to cut it. Because in other areas, we see how people who have access to drugs and, and, and the like. So what I would suggest perhaps is this. Now that temporary ban in order to contain the situation but do that side by side by having an effective me mechanism for checking um, sellers who sell to underage Absolutely. children and like Dr. Dr. Babati had mentioned the road um, NURT should check their members and run a sensitization drive yes. a massive drive to ensure that they understand the effect and actually calm down very heavily on this after a period when there's a mass improvement then with regulation, you can introduce it and then people understand that it's their own responsibility to doing this. In, in, the, in the UK, in other parts of the world, there's the frown and it's illegal to sell to underage people. And there are Absolutely. many measures. You must you have, have ID cards. If you yeah. look young, you're not allowed to. And then yeah. both the seller, the business owner, would be sanctioned for selling. So those are the kind of things that we should I still ask about my ID card. Just oh, really? Of course. <laughs> That's a compliment. Is it? <laughs> well, all right. Regulations should be in place. Well, we'll take another story. In the midst of the allegations of corruption against the Labour Party national chairman, Julius Aburi, the presidential candidate of the party, Peter Obi, on Thursday, called for an audit of the accounts of the party. This was as Aburi on Thursday, right here on The Morning Show, challenged the suspended national treasurer of the party, Oluchi Okpara, to provide concrete evidence to back her 3.5 billion naira fraud allegation against him. Speaking to journalist Peter Obi, who was accompanied by Aisha Yusufu, a member of his 2023 campaign team, said he's not involved in the accounting of the party's finances and that an auditor has been contracted to examine the party's finances. All the funds received directly or indirectly from that is not up to one. It's about not up to one percent of what is mentioned. People are claiming we received about 150 million dollars, and at state here, we didn't haven't seen one percent. And I stand for anybody to dispute or prove that. What we need to do in the party, and I discuss it with the leadership, is that we must now appoint a reputable audit firm to audit and be able to deal with the accounting of the party. So there's the allegation, account allegation now. So guys, the problems in Nigeria are unending. I mean, every day comes up with its own story. So guys, we all know that Nigeria is a dramatic scene. Every day we see new stories and new dramas, you know, happening on our political space and you can see it is everywhere so these governors they've now come together to look for ways to stop the hunger in the land do you think they are going to come up with any new idea do you think they've got any fresh idea on how to tackle unemployment in nigeria especially the hunger now that is wiring people i mean people are really hungry and the most painful aspect is that so many people are unemployed so you can imagine doubling the the the, the sorrow of nigerian people you are unemployed and at the same time you are hungry that alone can lead people into criminality i just hope that this government comes up with real ideas on how to fix this issue of hunger because it is real and it's really affecting people negatively at the moment let me know what you think about this in the comment section below please don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on the notification bell please give this video a like so that youtube can recommend it to others and let me know what you think in the comment section below thank you